Bray Wyatt was a dude that had aura on Hall of Fame. He was super creative and his storytelling was unmatched. Everything he said or showed us had a meaning behind it. And to be honest, I can't imagine another wrestler ever even be like him. He was different. He used to have his tough rocking chair and his family right behind him. He was on straight business and he was getting in everyone's head and I loved it. Cause when he spoke, you listened. Because he could cut a promo with some of the greats. And he gave his fans some of the greatest characters and some of the greatest interests ever. So growing up in the PG era, he was one of those guys that was always one of my favorites. From all the way from his 2013 debut to his last WWE appearance. I always loved watching him and he gave me a lot of fun moments. So rest in peace to Wyndham and let's get into this banger. The summer of July in 2013, we finally got to see Bray Wyatt's debut. The Wyatt family was creepy like they just came out of a horror movie. As a kid, Bray Wyatt was scary as hell and he was the undertaker for my generation. Bray would come out pitch dark just with his lantern and his family. Honestly, everything about his entrance was iconic. Bro, the Wyatt family became one of the best factions in the WWE super fast. They were on fire. 2014, the Wyatt family took their careers to the next level. This was one of their best years, if not the best one. We saw them cook it up with so many legends, and the first one was Daniel Bryan. We saw Bray manipulate and get in Daniel's head. He even convinced this man to join the Wyatt family. Yo, this is when Daniel Bryan was the biggest babyface in the world. Everyone and their mama loved him. They used to love him more than anyone, and Bray had him on his side for a little bit. Cause for one of the most iconic moments in the PG era, Daniel Bryan left the Wyatt family. And the crowd gave us one of the biggest pops in history. Like for real, for real, go back and watch this. It was crazy. So Daniel Bryan's turn meant one thing, a match between them at Royal Rumble 2014. They opened out the Royal Rumble and they gave us a great match. Honestly, one of Bray's best matches. Bray got the biggest win of his career at this time and I loved it so much because it established him as a star. Also, he got the one without the Wyatt family. He told them he didn't need them for the match and he proved exactly that. The next few we got to see him in, bro, he was definitely gonna need his family for that battle. We were finally gonna get the dream matches of all dream matches from my childhood. Two iconic factions giving us the match that every fan wanted to see. And we were gonna get this dream match four weeks after his banger with Daniel Bryan. 2014 Bray was cooking like the rent was due, but my mans really wasn't playing. Cause obviously if you watch this match, you already know how good it was. This is my favorite three on three match ever and it just gives me so much nostalgia from when I was younger. I really love this one right here. The Wyatt family got another huge win. They was on fire. Next, he was going for the final boss. I mean, Super Cena, the GOAT, John Cena. All the other feuds were big parts of my childhood, but this was literally my childhood. When these two were feuding, I even went to Monday Night Raw on the road to WrestleMania 30. My parents got me tickets as an early birthday gift. I got to see The Shield, Hulk Hogan, and AJ Lee. It's cool to know that I got to see all my favorites growing up. But of course, the night I go, the Wyatt family did Cena super dirty. So for WrestleMania 30, we were getting John Cena vs Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt debuted literally a few months before this and he was already getting a big match against John Cena at WrestleMania. Bro, this match had the best promo package. Like, I really remember watching this over and over when I was younger. They had Eminem's song on it and bro, it was fire. Like for real, for real, it was perfect. Going into this match, I was definitely hyped and I wanted Cena to win. Looking back at it though, Bray should have won cause it would have made him such a bigger star at that time. But it was still great for him just to get this big match with John Cena. Some of y'all might know already that I stopped watching wrestling a lot after WrestleMania 30. I started to become on and off. So I didn't really get to see a lot of Bray Wyatt after that WrestleMania. I did see when Bray had all the kids singing his song and he beat John Cena in a steel cage, but that's really like the last memory I have for Bray Wyatt at this time. 
I didn't get to see when Braun Strowman made his debut or even when the Wyatt family went face to face with The Rock and John Cena at WrestleMania 32. I know I wasn't active on WWE and I feel like I miss a lot, but your boy was still on 2K and best believe Bray was one of my goal twos. His finisher was mad OP in 2K bro, nobody was reversing. So I came back to WWE in 2016 around the time of the draft and when I saw Bray Wyatt again, he looked different. His aura went up and this dude had dreads now. This was low key my favorite Bray Wyatt bro, my guy had some better drip. Not even just that though, Bray was still getting in people's heads and this dude was low key a genius. He recruited Randy Orton to the Wyatt family. Now we all know Randy is a snake so you gotta watch him, but when you got him on your side, bro he got your back. Bray and Randy was like Jordan and Pippen. We saw those two hold it down for Team Smackdown at Survivor Series 16. Randy sacrificed himself so Bray could get the win. Then Bray and Randy had the tag team championships for a little bit and everything seemed great. Until Randy won a Royal Rumble. And then at Elimination Chamber, Bray won his first WWE Championship. This was a moment that he really deserved and it felt like WWE was putting their stamp on him. Randy as a Royal Rumble winner and Bray as a WWE Champion you know what has to happen next, it's WWE. Randy betrayed Bray. After Randy got on his knees and promised he wasn't gonna pick him, literally two weeks later, this dude was burning cribs. Yo, Randy was a snake and Bray should've definitely knew that. So once Randy turned on him, it escalated quick. This rivalry was mad fire, it had so much story behind it, and this was one of my favorite Wyatt feuds ever. Definitely one of the best of 2017. But WWE booked this all wrong. They had weird pictures on the ring during the match and they gave Randy Orton a win. Bray only held the belt for a little over a month and they already dropped the ball with him. I love Randy, but he didn't need this win. And WWE just continued to keep making the same mistakes with Bray Wyatt's career. And this continued over and over. They never pushed Bray the way they were supposed to, and it was like they were scared to give him the keys. It honestly made no sense. Bray had the fans behind him, and he was one of the best on the mic at that time. And for some reason, WWE was playing with this man's whole career. So this forced Bray's hand. It was time for him to make a big, big change for his character, because WWE was tripping. In 2019 at the WrestleMania 35, I stopped watching wrestling again. <laughs> Bruh, chill. 2019 was infamous for not being that good. But little did I know, I was missing some fire stuff from Bray Wyatt. This new character from Wyatt showcased his creativity and his range as a performer. He went from talking to kids to getting super serious and scary in seconds. Another cool thing was that every segment left a hidden message behind it. Bray was really cooking something up and a lot of fans started to love it. But even with Bray's new creation that became a fan favorite for a lot of fans, for some reason, WWE was still making bad booking decisions. Honestly, I don't get it. WWE was on some dumb stuff. They had a great new character and they didn't know what to do with it. They had this man drop the belt to a 53-year-old part-timer Goldberg in three minutes. No disrespect to Goldberg, but he wasn't supposed to win this match. So The Fiend had to save himself again, and he had that opportunity when he faced John Cena at WrestleMania 36. This was a WrestleMania where there were no fans, so Cena and The Fiend had to do this match completely different. They had a cinematic match, a match in a Firefly Funhouse. If you watch this, you know it was super entertaining, fun, and just such a legendary match. The Fiend was trying to get that win back from John Cena from the last time they fought at WrestleMania. He wanted to rewrite history, and he did. That match was cinema, and it went over a lot of John Cena's career. Fast forward to January of 2021, I still wasn't watching WWE, but little by little, YouTube started recommending WWE clips on my feed. I saw a clip of Roman vs Jay in the Hell in a Cell 
where Roman was crying in the middle of the ring. Then I saw clips of Randy being a menace and beating up all the legends in the WWE. I saw Randy and The Fiend going at it, just like the old days. Also, Bray and Alexa were together like Joker and Harley Quinn. But the thing that got me fully back into WWE was when Randy put The Fiend on fire. After I saw that, I needed to watch WWE again. I already had Peacock for The Office, so I started watching WWE at Royal Rumble 2021. And I've been here since. It's really possible that I never would have came back and I wouldn't be making videos on YouTube. It, it's crazy. So for WrestleMania 37, we were getting The Fiend vs. Randy Orton. I remember watching this live and I was mad excited to see that match. This was a feud I really liked and I used to hear everyone talk about how good The Fiend was and this was the first match I was going to see him in. The Fiend's entrance was insane. From transforming back to the OG Fiend and not being burned up was tough. Alexa bringing him out was a cherry on the top bro. They was cooking. Of course, this is the only match I've seen live from The Fiend. Cause WWE folded again. I don't know if WWE had something against Bray Wyatt or what, but those fools dropped the ball so many times with him. Looking back at all these dumb decisions now, it's just so disappointing because they waste so much time with him and he could have been such a bigger star. To make it worse, these dudes really released Bray Wyatt. This came out of nowhere, no one expected this. I thought it was fake when I first saw a post about it. Bro, this was a Hall of Famer in my childhood, one of my favorite wrestlers growing up, and WWE fired him. WWE had to be on something when they did this and all the other terrible releases that year. A year and some change later, Triple H took over creative and we saw a lot of familiar faces come back to WWE. This made so many fans happy cause we were getting returns left and right. But then we started getting cryptic QR codes and teasers. Everyone knew what it was and everyone was hyped to see what was gonna happen next. At Extreme Rules 2022, Brave finally got the moment he deserved. We saw all his old puppets come to life and everyone in the arena was singing. He got the whole world in his hands. This was a moment I'll never forget watching live. One of my favorite returns of all time. For Bray Wyatt's last run, he didn't really get enough time to do much. He introduced a new character that was a part of his faction, Uncle Howdy, and then he had a few with LA Knight, which definitely helped him get some recognition from the main roster fans. But Wyatt's last appearance came on February 27th, 2023. It's really crazy cause no one had a thought that this would be the last time we see him. But it's just tragic what happened. On August 24th, 2023, Wyndham Rotunda sadly passed away. This completely shocked the wrestling world everywhere. He was only 36 years old. And there were even reports that he could be working on returning to the ring soon. But this is just sad and he'll forever be missed. He was a once in a lifetime talent and he gave me endless of memories watching WWE. And if it wasn't for his run in 2020, I don't know if I'm doing wrestling videos. So thank you Wyndham and peace.